I ended up doing with Zendaya when um she had the faux locks and uh, for the Oscars and they said yeah, she looked like that was you that was me bitch <laughs> So everybody that comes in real quick, I have them tell me who you are besides your name. Um, and then one thing that you love most about who Shelby Swain is. You know, I'm just a badass, talented bitch that just knows how to do hair real well. You know what I'm saying? That just has a heart of gold in, um, <laughs> and I love gold too. You too, you too. What is it that you love about yourself, Shelby? I, you know, I never actually, I just love the fact that I'm just me. You know what I'm saying? I just like that. I just kind of just don't give a fuck. And I just like really just kind of just stay true to who I am. I like ghetto ass shit. And I incorporate it in everything that I do. <laughs> you do. And one thing that I love about you, that's like the authenticity of who you are. When I met you, I was like, who is this girl? <laughs> because you were so different from other hairstylists that I've experienced, other people that I've experienced on set for different things. And I'm just like, finally, and no shade to anybody else because, you know, I understand yeah. people wanting to button up and just, you know, but it was just so nice and refreshing to walk into that space and to feel that type of energy that you have um, and to see that, yeah, and to see how you treat people and to see how you interact with folks, even how you interact with Lizzo. And I was like, who is this girl? Because I came for Lizzo. <laughs> but I, I left, I left, fell in, I fell in love with you. Oh, <laughs> thank you so I much. <laughs> but you I know. love that about you. And even when I got to see you do your, do your thing, Lizzo had you doing her hair on stage. Um, and you guys had on the Nipsey uh, merchant, like the Nipsey apparel. Yes, the um, Jimmy Kimmel. Yes. I was I, I knew it was late night, but I loved that moment. That was so black, so that strong, was, so beautiful. That was a great moment, definitely. That was a very strong moment, and I'm just so thankful to be just a part of just that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it just brought, yeah. you know, it's it just really. I feel like it touched the masses in a way that it it, it needed to be touched. You know what I'm saying? It needs to be recognized, and I really thought that was kind of cool. I did too. You definitely had us talking and I, I love that Lizzo does that. She incorporates the people around her into her space in different ways. Um, and I know I've heard about you talk, talking about your start as a hairstylist, but I remember you saying something about you were an assistant and then all of a sudden like you were the girl. Um, I definitely is. I don't think I was like an assistant. I definitely assisted though. I'm not gonna lie. You gotta, you gotta do that as a hairstylist. You gotta, you gotta assist. So it wasn't official, but, but you were um, helping. Pretty much how I got my start. I just got my start from just doing like little photo shoots, little test shoots and stuff. And then from there, like I got, um, I got pretty known because I started doing like other like celebrities, like Sean Ross, you know, a few more other. And then I ended up from there. I ended up doing Zendaya. When um she had the faux locks you know, for the Oscars, and they said yeah, she looked like... that was you? That was me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then I from there, it just that. went that way. Wow, because that was a moment in time. First of all, for Zendaya to be so unapologetic about her Blackness, that really ruffled a lot of feathers, because, you know, she, she A-list. They don't know how to do what A-list gets into, like, Let's get black on them. They get crazy. You know, so how did that come about? Like, was it your idea? Was it her idea? It was kind of just like, um, it just happened like the night before. It was just like a conversation that just kind of just turned into like a, a hairstyle. Like, let's make a statement. Let's try something different. And it worked. It worked. It worked. It worked. I, mean, I feel like we need to always represent our hairstyles no matter what on any kind of carpet. We need to always represent us, period, no matter where, what room we in. Yeah, because I was you don't usually, well, now you get to see it a little bit more. Before Corona, we were seeing it a little bit more. We also definitely love how you experiment with Lizzo's hair because you did like a full lock situation at the NAACP Awards with like an updo. So el making these styles elegant, like because we all know that sometimes with it, when it comes to natural hair they, they say a lot of things but they don't ever call it professional or polished 
And I don't understand why. I feel like hair is hair. As long as you make it look good, that's all that matters. And I feel like our hair needs to be exactly. accepted. I'm tired. So, so tired. Well, tell me, Shelby, about baby Shelby and your hair journey. Like, was there ever a time? I would love to know, like, a time in your life, especially your young adult life, where you had to, like, accept your black hair, where, where maybe it was someone said something or people made you feel a way about it. Was there ever a time? I accepted it very young because I was bald headed growing up. You know what I'm saying? And this is like when you're around everybody with <laughs> hair that's flourishing, <laughs> you got to do something. So it kind of turned me into a hairstylist at a very young age. Like I've always loved hair. And I've always loved the way I always like people watch like hair shows and competitions. And like I used to love going to the beauty shop and just sitting there and watching everybody get their hair done. It's such a long process. You in the shop all day. But to me, I feel like being in those um, spaces really kind of just helped me just understand who I am as a person, uh, understand my hair, and how I can manipulate it and, like, do, like, bomb things with it. Like, I don't have to just have this one look. I can have so many looks. And right. it's, like, it just really just, it just shows that um, having, like, with our hair being so versatile, it's just like, come on. I, I need to play with it. It's so and versatile. I need to play in other people's heads. So that was early. Did you, like, love hair early, too? Or did you have to get into the I idea of loving hair. hair and doing it? I absolutely loved hair. I used to do all my uh, Barbies, my Cabbage Patch dolls. Like, everybody had braids. They always had individuals. Everybody got braided. All my dolls <laughs> got braided up. <laughs> Just all different styles. Because you know that, that, Barbie, that Barbie scalp is a bit of a lace front. That's a it lace is. front all day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She got... She got it is. She got, she got that Barbie, one egg Barbie lace front. <laughs> she really do. <laughs> she really do. So you always was doing that. I used to cut my Cabbage Patch's hair, and my mom would get so upset because I would always get my Cabbage Patch's these, like, buzz cuts. <laughs> That's what you got to do because it's like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, let me play. Like, I don't understand why they don't have right. these multiple hairstyles. At they the should, but they, they tried. They tried to create dolls with, with hairstyles that you could manipulate, but it was like, it was always white doll hair. It was never our hair. Never. And that's... Recreate. You can't recreate this. <laughs> no, and that's what I used to have issues with. I'm like, hold up, like, this is fun and all, but I need something that's actually more realistic to me. So that's why I always find myself, like, right. trying to braid in other textures in. <laughs> I will always try to get like little, you know, kinky curly hair, try to braid it in, try to give her like a little style, cut it, like cut her real hair short so I can put the extensions in so I can really go in. And it's like, you was uh, weaving why don't y'all just make this? Hair into the Barbie thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you stepped into your purpose, mighty strong, ma'am. Um, did you like, okay, so you, you were doing all these uh, jobs and you were doing other celebrities. We got this in day a moment. When did the Lizzo moment happen? It came in like a few years later. Um, it was actually kind of just, it was so random. My homeboy, uh, he was working on Lizzo's video, good as hell. And he was like, hey, do you right. want to come in and um, assist and like, well, not assist, but do like um, all the background girl's hair. And I was like, yeah, that's perfect. And um, he didn't even tell me really who it was for anybody. I was just like, all right, cool. So I ended up um, going, doing everybody's hair there. And then Lizzo came in. I was like, oh, shoot. Like, okay, that's what's up. Because I didn't know who I was working for. I was just like, you know. And then when I saw her, you I just saw were her doing hair. the background girls. I was just doing the background girls. But when I saw her, I was like, damn, right. she's fabulous. Like, her hair, she had these two huge puff balls. I was like, yes. And then... After I was, like, she didn't even know I was doing anybody's hair. Like, she didn't know anything. And then after I finished, my friend was like, why don't you pretend to be her hairstylist in the video for good as hell? And I was like, he was like, just get in there. So I'm in there pretending to be her hairstylist. Like, and then from there, like, <laughs> she still didn't know I did hair. So it ended up being, like, months later. Um, but her, um, her uh, creative director, Quinn Wilson, she knew I did hair. And when she found out... Um, you know, because she was like, oh, you did everybody's hair here? That's pretty cool. Let me get your contact. And she got my contact. She was like, oh, shoot, I'm already following you. I remember when you did um, some other work. And she brought me in, like, months later. And I just, we just ended up in work, like, working together ever since. And I think that's, like, 
the great. I think it's a great that's moment. Fire. It was yeah, like one of the greatest fire. moments. That's some real, like, what's for you is going to be for you. Like, you didn't need to take that moment, even though you got gifted this awesome moment of sitting with her to do her hair in the video. You you could have been like, hey, by the way, girl, I be doing hair. But you know, nah, nah, I'm not. Like, that's not who I am as a person because I know, like, for one, everybody has their own hairstylist and their hairstylist that they love. I don't like getting between people's hairstylists. So I was just like, you know, her hair, you know what I'm saying? She was phenomenal. But it ended up just working out later on that it just happened that way. And I was just like, oh, wow. And I think, like, working with Lizzo is just, like, great because, like, she just lets me explore. And we get to work together and create things <laughs> together. And I think that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Because some people yeah, won't, let, won't let you do that. Exactly. We've seen you've been able to do some creative, like really fun stuff. I was living for them finger waves when the, when she had the Missy performance. I just I love I love so many the wood grain. The that wood nobody grain. knows is hair. That is hair. That's hair that I painted so on site at the BET Awards. This was your first time doing something like this. Oh yes, I've never painted hair in my life. I I I've never done that. Girl. I've always wanted to go be in like go to probably Bronner Brothers and all that and do like hair helicopters and shit. But I've never done it. I just knew it was in my mind. I was like, you know, I just wanted to start playing with just more and more just like creative hair. And then when it, that was for the BT Awards, it all started with, I wanted, she said, I want wood grain nails. And I was like, and then um, stylist Marco was like, well, let's do a wood grain outfit. And I'm like, well, don't leave me out. Let's do some wood grain hair. The fuck? Girl, because my show would have been over there like, oh, I don't know how to do it. Uh, I don't know how to do it. I'm not even a painter, so I don't even know how it worked out, but it worked you out. killed it. Nah, you killed that. I could not believe that that was hair. That's incredible. So now I know people must be looking for you now, beating this door down, but you, you look loyal to our beautiful Lizzo. I I love, I, I love where I'm at. I think it's, I think it's, the greatest thing <laughs> I yeah. like working with yeah, people girl, that like to work with me and let me be free that's the freedom and you guys look like an actual friendship too which is also really great because it leads to having a better relationship when it comes to just the in intimacy and the trust that's my home girl like that's my girl for real and that's why it works yeah I can see that. I love the team that she has created. And I like, I love following you on the gram when she was on tour and just watching all y'all shenanigans. And I was like, how do y'all keep up with this girl? Because her energy is otherworldly. Because she still does all, all the partying and all the fun. And she still gets on stage and gives you the full notes. And she the does dances. It. How are y'all keeping up with it? Or how did you keep up with that woman? Um... I think it was like there's believe me there was days where it was hard but I think it was pretty easy because being just in such a good positive fun environment where just everybody just brings some type of just like positivity and litness it's like come on like why would I be any other way I gotta be lit we all have to be lit we gotta right. have fun because it's like I'm doing my I'm doing what I want to do at on the greatest level like on a great you know what i'm saying so it's like on a high level it's like i wouldn't trade that in for no other like no i gotta be lit because i'm oh, actually i'm lit i'm happy it's just like yes i want to know if you can um think back on some of your hair your fond hair memories and tell us a story about yourself discovering artistry in your work or in even as a kid mm, mm. I will say probably in hair school. In hair school, that was so challenging because I just went to hair school so I could just make money, so I could just be a licensed psychologist. I mean, not psychologist, um, but we are like psychologists anyway. But I just wanted to be a licensed cosmetologist. You know, I was like, I need money and I got to go to school. So when I went to school, um, we had to do a hair show where we had like so many models and we had to create a whole everything. And I was like, oh, shit. So I just, we had a whole, whole runway. So I had like 10 models. I had to make all their clothes, me. I had to make, and I don't even sew. I had what? to make all their clothes. Okay. I had to make all these crazy ass hair sculptures and stuff like that. It went from like, I don't know. I had like a queen and then she had like her, like, 
princesses and like little servants kind of crazy but it was so dope it's like coming to america type shit she was in a big fan oh, chair and everything okay. they came out walked around was really working. Leaves. huh you was really working hell yeah i had to get that a <laughs> and i had to um i i did this first this massive ass hair piece and that's when it started i was like oh wow this is so cool like and then from her hair piece i had to make like children hair pieces you know what i'm saying like from right i had to bring it down and it was a so cool to make like just like from her one hairstyle to just create like nine other hairstyles that went with it i thought that was so cool. right and i knew that that moment that kind of that kind of changed my life because i was like wow i can really kind of like start and finish something and i can take whatever it is in my mind and actually create it and people will love it because i had the best you know i was the best one we won <laughs> <laughs> and then the and then the humility on top of it all. <laughs> no, <laughs> I saw on your gram for your birthday. What you see? Was it a surprise party that Omarion and his fine brother Orion showed up? I'm just trying to figure out. Who who put out the cuckoo? <laughs> listen, listen. It was my birthday. My birthday was, um, it was like, a, it was kind of like a surprise party, but it wasn't a surprise because we're in quarantine. So it was kind of like, can you just come over right. here? Just come over here and get, be cute. Because that's come what it looked like happened. And be cute. So I was like, I know how to do that. I know how to pull up and I know how to be cute. I had no idea. I had literally no idea what was happening, what was going on. I just knew it was going to be fun. And I had to be cute, so that means pictures were going to be there. I was going to take some pictures. And it's my birthday. Like, I'm right. 30 and shit. I had no idea. I literally had no idea that Omarion, Orion, and I'm going to just say, it's their cousin. I didn't, I forgot. I forget his name. But I'm going to just name him Osiris. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my My birthday There's was a cousin. phenomenal. It was already phenomenal when I pulled up. It was the greatest moment ever. It was crab legs and everything. It was my friends. It was my, my family. So I was like, oh, this is the most. I was like, this is perfect. And then about an hour and a half, two Girl. hours later, did I hear it was somebody's birthday? And I looked back. I, I, I took off running. I ran. <laughs> Away from my Marianne? <laughs> Away. I had, to, I, had to get, I had to get up out of there. I couldn't believe what. I, I felt like it was like you ever watched like Super Sweet Sixteen <laughs> and the celebrity walking. I had to get up out of. <laughs> I had to go. I had to. I couldn't. I couldn't even be in there a second longer. I was out. You so that was, silly. I can't. That was the greatest Sis, moment of my life. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your music, Shelby Swain, because <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> Because I was listening to your, first of all, your Christmas song and your birthday song, both very ignorant and amazing, and I love them. <laughs> you still me, yes, yes, that's how I like it. But I love that. So are you a bona fide musical artist? I don't know what I am, but sometimes I have a song in my heart, and I just need to let it out. So I don't, I have no problem playing I have no problem doing whatever it is my mind is saying. Shelby, bitch, you need to do this shit right now. Because I also, I love music, of course. I, I work in, look who I work for. I work with an amazing artist. You know what I'm saying? I'm in yes. the music industry, and I love videos. So I really kind of make music just so I can have music videos. I want my own just, you know? So that's what I like to I do. I can see that. I love your Christmas videos. I love the Christmas video. It's so much fun. So are you going to continue on giving us music? Are we well, getting, we like, have EP? some um, EPs coming very soon. And um, I actually just shot a video. I shot a fire ass video. It's called Hit It From The Back. You know me. You know me. I like to, I like to create. What did you find out? Is Amarion or Orion or Osiris in the video? Y'all want to just find out. The O's <laughs> made it. <laughs> So, Shelby, what do you feel like is your ultimate goal when it comes to yourself as this person, this human, this talent? What do you What do you want to do with yourself? I just um, I just want to create. I just want to create and just be me authentically and just let the world see it. 
with whatever it is I want to do, yeah. whether it's hair, music, all of it in one, acting. Like, it's just kind of just like, I really just want to see, you know, I'm just going to let, I'm just going to let it, I'm going to see where the future takes me. But at the same time, I'm always going to be me with it. Right, right. Unapologetically, you, it's worked for you this far. It has. Yes, well, do you has. feel like Black women are very, Black women are very respected in this industry, especially when it comes to hair. Um, do you feel as though you've ever had to prove yourself because you're a Black woman, or is it you're more accepted in this industry because you are a Black woman? No, sometimes I do have to. Like, especially like working with big companies, they like to work with their, like, household hairstylist you know what i'm saying and sometimes that's hard because you know it has like it's a lot of conversation of we don't that's not like we don't want her to do hair but we have our own people and it's like right. you don't even know what i can do like the person that you even have are they even like qualified to do anything in our kind of hair like you know what i'm saying like sometimes it is kind of hard and i do have to like now i've because of my catalog and like people seeing my work, it's kind of like a little easier, but it's still kind of hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm always curious about that just because seeing other folks' experiences in the industry and now having people be a lot more, um, a lot more open about opening up about what they've experienced in these, in these different spaces. Um, it, ne it never matters where you are or how high you climb there's always a, a, you're always made, like your blackness is always made apparent to you in in every situation. That's why I'm always curious to like, when people are climbing, are you still experiencing that? And does it change at all when you've proven yourself? Yeah, I, like I said, I do actually, I don't scare, yeah, actually I do. Right now I haven't, but there's been times like just last year where it was just like, oh, you can't do this. Or you can't do that. And it's like, why? Like, you know who I am. You know what I've done. You see my work. You see my work is good. But it's like, no. No, we're going to use this person. And it's like, wait a minute. Right. Why? Like, yeah, that's a, that's a lot. I mean, but how do you even combat that? Do you just keep it moving? You know, sometimes you like, it's like kind of like you win something, you lose something, you got to prove to them later on, like, you fucked up. Now, oh, now you want me. Because now, and then they come back. They do come back, though. They will come back That's around. Like, oh, my God, we bridge. love you. We have to have you. And it's like, hold up. Remember you said I couldn't do that cover? Because I wasn't qualified? Because you wanted to use your hairstylist that's been with you for 20 years? All right, cool. Right. See, and that's hard to not want to let that pettiness come out. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard to, like, accept it and be like okay cool I'll do this job but like in the back of my mind I'm thinking of it but at the same time I think I would be petty be like, nah oh, cause funny. sometimes being petty gets you nowhere you know what I'm saying Ooh, child say that again sometimes being petty gets you nowhere it just gets you petty it just makes you petty I was like alright I had a petty moment but where do we go from here that's real that's actually a really great piece of advice cause you do want to be saying those little I'm a jabber so I like jabbing but i also know that sometimes it doesn't don't get you nowhere and you just look you know salty. my mom loves quoting michelle obama she loves that damn quote and i hate it because i'm like you go I'm low. trying to go high i'm trying to go just as low as them lower but where's that gonna get me that's gonna get me nowhere it literally doesn't it doesn't i must I'm be at the bottom of the time where i'm gone yeah, like I've never even been in a situation where I needed to, where I thought I needed to go petty and the person changed their mind or the person cried. Like there's never been a time where I've gotten anything from that except like this amount of satisfaction. But this like, amount. That? And that doesn't, that, nah, nah. I want, I want the full room of satisfaction. If I know, if I, if I, if I have to be, by me not being petty is going to give me that type of satisfaction, then I'm going to just run with that. But if I'm just going my way to just cut somebody out and say some shit to them, and it's like, okay, well, guess what? You can't work here again. <laughs> or you can't do this. Or you're like, you're black. You know what I'm saying? You, it's like, nah. And please, and you know how the industry is. You don't know who people are. You, you don't know, know when you're going to see them again. 
you never know. Wendy Williams see always again. tells a story about meeting this production assistant back in the day who she had a really great rapport with. And this production assistant decades later got this space to be able to uh, hire for this situation and thought of her. I was like, oh, you know, I, the same thing actually happened with Oprah and how Oprah got her show, her first uh, news show in Chicago. This producer she worked with way back when remembered the delight that she was and was like, oh, I know somebody. And she brought Oprah in and Oprah helped save this news show. But also she got brought in because the woman remembered how good she felt working with her. Exactly. You just never know who people are. You never know who you're going to work with. You never know, like, like you say, you never know how people are just going to grow to be. So the thing is, it's like, no matter what, any person on any level, you just got to keep them, treat them kind with respect. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you don't know. The person that might be getting coffee for you, look at uh, Diddy. He was all getting coffee. Now he did. He did he dirty money. You never freaking know. Come on. Listen, Come on. The money is long and strong. <laughs> big, it's big strong. Don't, you, you, don't, don't fall into the trees. <laughs> so that's, oh yeah, you know, you know, now she got me, she got me. But that's why you always got to keep people, no, like, you always got to treat people with respect. You just have to, and you, you can't be petty. You just never know. Right. One thing that I talk about a lot when it comes to blackness and success is the fact that our success does not come solo. It doesn't come by ourselves. And we are like, I'm, I'm constantly thinking about people that I reach back and pull forward or reach to the side and pull with me. I feel like because of the limitations of our society, there's a lot of people that wouldn't necessarily get into the room if not for the people that made the, their way into the room, yeah. you know? And so with that, do you find yourself, um, because you are still climbing and you are still grinding, do you find yourself reaching back to pull forward? Um, and mentoring definitely. in any way? Definitely, definitely. Because like I said, a lot of, I wouldn't have a lot of jobs if it wasn't for somebody that just believed in me. I wouldn't have, oh shit, to be honest. Like, yeah, I'm great. Like, it's kind of like what Nunu's daddy said. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah, yeah, I brought up ATL. It you is what it Nunu's is. just say Nunu's daddy. <laughs> <laughs> and look, it Esquire got in because of the letter recommendation from the daddy. So it's literally like, I could be the greatest person in the world, the greatest hairstylist in the world, but if somebody right. got some, a friend in higher places, who you think they gonna choose? So it's like, with me, now that I know that, I make sure that I always bring somebody with me. I make sure that, but I have to, you know, I, I mean, you gotta make sure they're the right people, but you gotta like, I was about to say, you can't just stick your neck out for any Nah, nah, nah. You got to see what kind of character they have. You got to go down the lines of who they are as a person. But you got to bring people with you because it's like, I would, love to, I would love to make sure that I give somebody a chance the same way that somebody gave me a chance. Mm. Yeah, that's real. I love that. Um, I want to know what's the biggest before you get up out of here because our the time goes by so fast, don't it? <laughs> oh damn it's what been is a minute. the biggest lesson I, you're like it's it's been a long time um, <laughs> what is the biggest thing that you feel like you learned about Shelby as a human at, in, in doing this work that you've been able to do in your career I've learned that I'm very well under I work very well under pressure and that's I know everybody says that but I really do because I stopped talking and when I stop talking, that's how you know something phenomenal is about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say a word to me. Let me just go in here and create. I've learned that I can, I've actually learned that I can just really just put my mind to something and really just go with it and to see what, like, you know, I just, it's crazy because I've accomplished things I would have never even imagined. You know what I'm saying? Now that I'm here, I'm like, damn, I actually can do anything. Yeah. I can do anything I put my that's mind crazy. to. And you know, that's a beautiful thing to tap into is to be able to think in, in the way of possibilities. Because not a lot of people are able to think in possibility. You know what I mean? Like, we limit ourselves into what we can see, what we can explore, we have experience, as opposed to dr dreaming, essentially. Yeah. A lot of people don't dream I have no I problem it. turning my dream into a reality because most of the time I can't even see far. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like right there in that moment. But I know at this moment exactly. that I'm in whatever I'm doing, 
is going to open up some type of opportunity and door for the future. And I always, that's why I always make sure I just do my best and I just make sure I give it my all. And I just, like I said, I always just try to keep it just as much as me as possible. So when I do get to that point, I'm, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? I just believed in me. You got to. You got to believe in you, no matter what. Even if it sounds crazy. <laughs> Even if it sounds crazy, girl, I be believing in myself like when Noah built the ark. Look, look and sounded crazy, but that worked out. <laughs> no, you know people people like I've noticed like even talking to like some of like my homegirls and stuff they're like damn I should have done this or I should have done that and they like kind of beat themselves up for not being where they are just doing just things that they feel like has nothing to do with like their career and I'm like girl do that shit do it because that's the thing it's not one thing that's going to help you build your foundation it's multiple things so whatever you need to learn and whatever you that's in your heart and your desire to help you grow to be the best you, just do it. Like, yeah, you might be a phlebotomist, like a phlebotomist but you also might want to do eyelashes. You never know where this could take you. The two could take you so far. Do it. <laughs> do it. I love, girl, yes, love that mentality because you don't ever know. And honestly, you you can talk yourself out of doing a lot of things from the big to the small if you just don't. We talk ourselves out of doing so many things. It's like, girl, fuck that thought and do it. Do it. I hope y'all receiving the word from the church and these shall be slain. We love it. Shelby, thank you for being in here. On your way out, I want you to, because there is such a big conversation going on right now in this chaotic time that we're in, um, kind of zeroing in on Black women, I want you to give Black women some words of encouragement and um, and love and light. Man, you put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> Hold up now. Let me talk to them you talk to yourself when you be getting dressed looking like you look. Girl, I be really in the mirror like, bitch, you are a bad bitch and you got this. It's so simple, but it really be the truth because it's like, at the end of the day, we are living in times of just chaos. And it's just like, you need something that's going to pick you up. You need like, it's sometimes it's hard just to get out the bed and just be able to go out into the world. You... It's so hard, but you just need to know that you have yeah. yourself. If nobody has you, you have yourself. We weren't, now, some people were born with a twin, but even they don't be born at the same time. When you are born, you're born by yourself. You go out to the world, you go out to the world by yourself. You got to be the right. best you you could possibly be. That's it. Keep your head high. Just know that God got you or whoever you believe in, but just that it, it got, they got you. And just know that you are loved from within yourself and from a higher power, from the people that you feel like, you know, your supporters, your friends. Like sometimes people feel so lonely in the world. And it's like, nah, bitch, you got a homegirl. You got an auntie. You know what I'm saying? You got somebody there. But it's like, regardless of having anybody, you know, you got yourself. And the thing is, yourself is going to take you far. Never give up on That's your real. dreams. Be the best you could be. Be the baddest bitch. If whatever it takes for you to be that bad bitch, if you got to put on some extra yeah. highlight, do it. If you got to go and She'll chill in the sauna, you got to read some shit. You got to, whatever you have to do, whatever is good for you, do it times 10. Even if it's just dancing That's in the mirror, word. do it. Do it. Well, I'm ready. You got me ready for action, Shelby. So you better be sending me a video. You twerking in. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming, honey. Anytime. I was flat. I was flat it right on in your DM. <laughs> Please, I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. Look, I know you gonna hold me to it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm waiting. And you, I'm, I'm waiting. gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna oil up and everything. Please. Thank you, Shelby Swain. <laughs> Thank you for having me so much. I really appreciate it. This was so fun. Mm -hmm.